Our final item of five out before we get out of here is about Gordon Hayward getting out of here. He announced right before we started recording that he is retiring from the NBA after a pretty decorated overall basketball career. When I think of Gordon Hayward, I close my eyes and I see the ball bouncing off the backboard, bouncing off the front rim and almost ending the hopes and dreams of another Duke championship. I'm curious, Dan, I don't know if you saw it in the Slack before we start. Do you know how much money Gordon Hayward made over his entire career? His entire career. All right. So he, he was on like, like, like a his, ballpark guess. I'm like, like 150, 175. Cause he, he, his, his all-star peak was before the money got nuts. Mm-hmm. But he got two hundred plus million dollar deals. You got the one Charlotte deal was big. That's right. The Charlotte deal the was Charlotte like deal was super a surprisingly. What are you guys doing big? All right. The Charlotte deal at four one twenty he got from the Hornets, which if people forget was after you know, that gruesome ankle injury opening night in Boston where it's supposed to be him and Kyrie and Al Horford propping up the two J's and they're going to make this run against LeBron. First play, alley-oop, ankle, done for the year. Then he gets, he goes to Charlotte by way of sign and trade for Kemba Walker, which was the Celtics' quick response to losing Kyrie Irving to the Nets. And then we kind of never really heard from Gordon Hayward again. He had a ton of injury stuff with the Hornets. I know from over the years, from various different iterations of leadership and staff members in that organization, he was kind of the Hornets version of Tobias Harris in Philly. But if Tobias Harris was supposed to be your best player, and I want our listeners to remember that pre Donovan Mitchell coming onto the scene in Utah, Gordon Hager was a crunch time ball handler, lethal scorer, all star dude who was leading the Jazz to the second round of the playoffs before the Celtics injury, before he kind of went to no man's land in Charlotte. And Coaches there were always kind of wringing their hands, being like, where is this guy? And he's a video gamer who like net doesn't really hang out with the young dudes all that much. Like he never became the next gen kind of like David West to the Indiana Pacers back in the Paul George days that I think Hornets people were hoping him to be. But the guy was like the peak of his Utah days. I remember Really falling in love with the Jazz. I guess it was the 15-16 season because I was on the night desk at Sports Illustrated and the Warriors were the talk of the town, the talk of the world. But a lot of Warriors games by like midway through the third quarter were just absolute blowouts. And when you're on the <laughs> desk at East on the East Coast at like 1 a.m. you're looking for some type of entertainment, Gordon Hayward's Utah Jazz were coming and they were great. And he played his way into being the top free agent of that offseason in 2018, 2017, whichever 2017. year it was that Chris Haynes put out the Hulk Hogan meme, which I which I made a joke with to Chris at a dinner during Vegas. And I love when Chris Haynes cackles laughing from his belly. It's like the funniest thing ever. I'm not going to impersonate it, but I really am fighting every urge <laughs> in my body to not do it. That's so, good. yeah, Gordon Hayward, great career, great tennis player. Beautiful hair. I remember when he did sign to Boston, I reached out to his agency priority and said, hey, let me go with Gordon to f- write a story about trying to find his barber in Boston. That didn't work out. <laughs> but yeah, kudos on retirement. And his final, I think, stamp footprint on the NBA, not really his playing time in OKC. The trade for out of Charlotte to the Thunder ended up benefiting OKC's books, getting off of Trey Mann and Vasily Michus, whose salary is long-term, Davis Bertans' is expiring salary from last season. Indirectly, directly, whatever, however directly it was, that trade absolutely benefited the Thunder and gave them the space to give the massive deal that they gave to Isaiah Hartenstein. So Gordon Hayward's Thunder tenure lived so Isaiah <laughs> Hartenstein's could die. And I'm sure Thunder fans everywhere are going to thank him for his services. 
I mean, it's certainly they'll they'll thank him more for that than they did the world for anything that he did in a Thunder uniform, which was not uh, not exactly the stuff of stirring highlight reels. I had high hopes for the Gordon Hayward signing. because I was like, oh, yeah, big, uh, big combo forward who can shoot off the, can, you know, be an off ball shooter and say in a secondary playmaker like, yeah, he makes a ton of sense for what the Thunder need and then <laughs> did not actually work out at all there. I don't have a, a ton to say about this, except that it's. It is, you know, really, really brutal that the injury was so severe, so dramatic and so lingering at the absolute peak of his career that he was 27 years old when he got to Boston. And that's when it's supposed to like you're at your apex there and goes up. Yeah, I mean, I I was watch I was writing about that game that night. I was working here and I was going to be writing off of it and, you know, having to to the immediate response to this is gruesome and catastrophic and like maybe don't watch the video clip that I have to embed mm. in here by, you know, as a, a a matter of course. And it was just it was absolutely sickening. And, and, and it on one level, it's devastating because the guy he was before that, again, I don't expect people to remember, especially our younger uh, listeners in the four year he became only really became a starter in 2013, like full time. He had been like kind of on and off off the bench in Utah. But the four years before he got to Boston, those last four years in Utah, 19 points, five rebounds, four assists per game on like above average shooting efficiency. That's like the only guys who've done that for careers are basically Hall of Famers, Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. That's like it's kind of guys who have won MVPs who will be Hall of Famers and then Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. And so like. If you're if the worst, like the low end of where you were at that kind of approaching the peak of your game is B.I. and Zion, like it's not it's not all that bad. Right. It's a pretty decent neighborhood to be in. And then if the upper echelon of that is like, again, literally, we're talking about the best forwards of all time, LeBron and Bird, guys like that. So I don't think he was ever going to get there necessarily, but he was on a trajectory to a multiple time all star, multiple time, you know, like significant long-term career and so Mm -hmm. that that does not wind up happening is something of a basketball tragedy right the flip side of it that he eventually did get back enough to where he averaged like 20 20 a game for a season in charlotte now those teams were not really teams of consequence but he recovered enough of himself to still be able to produce roughly and relatively for a while like what he used to be after several years of false starts and I would have to imagine grueling rehab and really difficult mental and physical work to get himself back there. So to decide at this point in his career, 14 years down the line after, you know, his last hope at a, at a making an impact on a playoff team didn't work out to decide to just, you know, cash it in and go from here. Like I, I get it, but there's something noble to the idea of like you want to go through what he went through and still be able to recover enough of it. I think Mm -hmm. there's something to be said for that. So, yeah, like I will always wonder what that team would have looked like if we got the full the full look at what Gordon Hayward actually could have been. I will always wonder how Kyrie Irving's experience in Boston would have gone had Gordon Hayward been healthy and had that team evolved differently. There's a million sort of uh, downstream ripple effects from that. But uh, Mm -hmm. the career that Gordon Hayward got wound up being uh, didn't wind up being maybe what we would have hoped for, but I think wound up being better than you would have hoped for at that moment given everything yeah. that he was dealing with. And you mentioned LeBron. If people forget, in 2014, when he was a restricted free agent, he got an offer sheet from Charlotte that Utah ended up matching. But also, he was like the top guy. Like, he visited Cleveland. He was the top guy on the Cavs board if LeBron didn't go back to the Cavs to start that whole second chapter there. So he was definitely one of those guys, one of those next all-star type guys around the league that a lot of people were trying to receive his services. And the answer to our trivia question, he ended up cashing out 270 million over his 14 years. So Gordon Hayward, I don't blame you for trying to find a $3.3 million vet minimum somewhere to just ride off into the sunset. He's a family guy. Go have fun with your kids. Go never get hurt again. And I wish he hit that bank shot against Duke. 